Okay, so uh, yep, welcome everyone. Um, so it's it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Yushin Lin from Boston University, um, and he's going to tell us about SYZ mirror symmetry of P two and enumerative geometry. Um, um, first, I want to thank the organizer for the invitation. It's my pleasure to give this talk in the seminar, and so today I would like to um, talk about the SYZ mirror symmetry of P two and the induced enumerative geometry. And so I believe everyone um, know very well about mirror symmetry of P2, but let me still give a cartoon of it. Oops. So for mirror symmetry of P2, um, so the mirror is the so-called under Ginsburg superpotential, and it can be, it's a holomorphic function from the complex torus to C and it can be written down very explicitly as x plus y plus one over x y. If you view this x y as the coordinate on C two, um, so why we're interested in this holomorphic functions because it give recovers a lot of interesting geometry of P two. For example, the Jacobian ring um, give us the quantum cold ring of P two, and the Foucault cytocategory category of W will give us the um, the right category of Korean sheaves and the oscillating integral of W will recover, say, uh, the descent generating functions for the descending gramma Witten invariance. And so even W itself uh, can, can be computed via, via this P2. So if you look at the Lagrangian vibration coming from the moment map, and so this W here can be written as. Um, is exact the generating function for the weight account of the so-called Moslov index two disks uh, with boundary on the moment map fibers. So there are two things that um, I will particularly mention. So one thing is that the fibers of it are three punctures elliptic curves. And uh, and this um, so when we talk about the superpotential itself as um, from c, c star square to c uh, with this particular function, this is a mirror to the actually a pair um, with a choice of the boundary divisor. And so if so, it's natural to ask if we can change the boundary divisor. Um, so a root computed this case. So he considered P2 and changed the relative divisor to a union of, so he smoothed out a corner of this, um, oops. So he smooths out a corner to a conic. And then, um, so on the complement of the conic and the line, there is a so-called, gross vibration, which is a special Lagrangian vibration. And so once you smooth out those nodes here, uh, that will introduce a singularities um, and looks like a node of singularity and here. And so um, Oru also computed the superpotential of it. And so one realize that this will be a partial compactification of the original. So act one actually still get the original superpotential, but the domain is, oops, so there's a square here. So the domain is um, get partially compactified. So by, so, so originally the, this, um, uh, superpotential here, one can view it as um, the fibers are three punctured tori. And so when they grew together, so the three punct you can view as the total space. Of, um, so the C star square can be viewed as an elliptic vibration with three sections deleted. And so the superpotential 
uh, that's mirrored to the um, the boundary divisor chosen to be a conic and a line is by um, is the same function holom holomorphic function, but you ex you filled in one section. So, so the philosophy is that every every time we smooth out a corner, the corresponding Lagrangian vibration will introduce a node, and on the mirror side, that will fill in a section that's missing in the original superpotential. All right. So then it's natural to um, expect. So if we smooth out the three nodes of the Originally, Tory boundary divisor, and so, and then if we smooth it to a smoother the curve, and so we smooth out three corners, and so then the complement one will expect then there will be three, uh, a spatial Lagrangian with three singular fibers, and so this is conjectured by Oru that um, one can or one can view it as like a. Um, a special case of the strominger yao zassel conjecture. And some um, non-compact case. So, so the conjecture, so one of the conjecture is that um, on the, so if we start with smoothly the curve in P2 and look at its complement, I will coax, and so I will use this X to denote a complement of any smooth cubic um, for the rest of the talk. And then a complement X, there will exist a special Lagrangian vibration. And due to the reason I just explained, one will expect there are three singular fibers. And so it's very natural to expect that, um, so for the torus fibers that near for the torus fiber that's near this um, elliptic curve, um, so um, there will be a side cos um, that's vanishing uh, when the Lagrangian fiber is approaching E. And so, if we're trying to union the um, th this uh, vanishing side cos, that will give us a thin build at the front infinity. And so, we we'll expect that there will be a unique Maslow index to this on the SYZ fibers. Right, so um, this will be um, the motivations why um, we expect um, there are such things. Right. And uh, besides this, um, there's a question that I'm interested in. Um, so there's, so if one has the, uh, so because this L is attacked away from this E, so one, it can bounce like the muscle of index zero disk, which does not uh, touch the boundary divisor E. And so if we cap with the, um, the muscle of index two disk that we just mentioned, so class beta zero. So topologically, they, they drew together to form um, a rational curve and only touch the boundary device. So poss possibly depends on the winding number of this boundary of this muscle of index disk, we might um, need to topological group to a multiple cover of this B naught, beta naught. And so then they will cap to a rational curve with maximal tangency. And so, um, so you see that um, topologically, so one will have a correspondence between the muscle of index zero disk and rational curves with maximal tangency. And so then uh, one will expect that the open gromo witten invariance, if there is a way to count this muscle of index zero disk, that will be the same thing as the log gromo witten invariance or gromo witten invariance with maximal tangency relative to the boundary divisor E. Well, that uh, one can ask if uh, the symplectic geometry invariance uh, is the same thing as the algebraic geometric invariance. And so what if, this, yes. What if there are no singular fibers in your Lagrangian vibration? Is this equality true? Uh, 
I think that that was sort of back to the Tory case. Or so, but there are no mass of zero disks. In the... Yeah, then there will be no mass of index zero disk. Yeah. But on the other hand, the open grammar with the invariants are non trivial. Uh, I, I don't think you, uh, so if there's no, uh, I, I don't know any examples like that at the moment, but yeah. Thanks for the question. Um, so, so this, I, uh, this idea is not, uh, Public good new. Um, so, so I believe that uh, earlier uh, the work of uh, Song Lee already uh, mentioned that there will, one can use the relative formal weight invariance to recover to to capture the behavior of open disk invariance, and this has been greatly used in the Grosevoort program and also in the work of Choi Van Garokets, Takahashi, uh, Chen Lao Leong, and and the work of um, mirror symmetry for Claude Biao. Um, orbifolds, three orbifolds of Fan, Liu, and so on. And probably there's many works that are using this philosophy. And so I would be interested to know if um, the open Gromov weight invariance defined in via simplex geometry uh, can be um, can be uh, compared with the log Gromov weight invariance from algebraic geometry. So while from simplex geometry, one will expect that one do nest stretching near E. And so that will establish a uh, correspondence between probably the open chromo with invariance with some symplectic close certain symplectic relative chromo with invariance, but then there will uh, still be some more work to compare with the symplectic version of relative chromo with invariance with the uh, relative chromo with invariance in algebraic geometry. And to, there's more work for calculation. All right. So I will say the naive idea to, to approach this question. So, so first is step is to construct the spatial Lagrangian vibrations on the complement of the, the curve. And then one was established a tropical holomorphic correspondence between the, whole, um, the open gromov witten invariance and tropical geom and the tropical counting. And on the other side, there's a um, compared uh, holomorphic curve counting or log weight invariance with the tropical geometry counting. And so then, um, then at the end, one compared um, what we're counting in the tropical geometry um, from symplectic geometry and algebraic geometry. Once they coincide, uh, then uh, this two invariants will be the same. And that will be the, the rough idea. So, so let me uh, say a few words about the setup of the geometry. So recall that E is um, the anti conic divisor of P2. And so on the complement, there exists a holomorphic, um, a mirromorphic two form with a simple pole along E. And so in particular, it will be a holomorphic volume form on X. And so on the other hand, uh, instead of using the Fubini Studi metric, which is, seems quite natural on P2, uh, I will use another metric, which is called a Tian Yao metric. So Tian and Yao, they prove that um, on the complement of a, any smooth anti cone divisor on the final manifolds, there always exists a complete exact Ricci flat metric on the complement. And so in particular in the dimension two case, um, the complex module pay equation will look like this. And in particular it implies that X is hyperkähler. And so here this exactness sort of, one can view that as it's corresponding to um, that uh, the, the, the things that we're looking at is sort of we're corresponding to um, this the simplex geometry is corresponding to um, the one that on P2 was the simplex form you choose is like proportional to um, 
a multiple of the C1. And so this first step is, um, so with the joint work with Tristan Collings and Adam Jacob. So what we prove is that there exists, a, really exists a special Lagrangian vibration respect to um, the, the TL metric and the holomorphic volume for a net which start with. So the main step, the fibers. So the TL metric, which is on fiber equal to zero and the imaginary part of the um, this capital omega reach on L equal to zero as well. So that is what we mean by the special Lagrangian vibrations. And more than that, um, one can do a hypercure rotation. Namely, I would, I will stay with the same underlying space of X, but I will, oops, I will use a different choice of the complex structure this is given by, by this two zero form. And uh, once we do the hypercure rotation, this become an additive vibration. And more than that, we proved that um, one can adding by adding an I9 fiber at infinity. So that can be compatified to Y check over P1. So here I9 means that um, there is a wheel of nine rational curves. And so that is the, the, the things that we we put at the infinity. And so then this Y will be a rational surface. So that means that there's an elitive vibration um, and also it's a rational surface. And this rational surface is uh, actually with exactly with three singular fibers and the singular configuration can be computed explicitly. So it has an I9 at infinity and there are three singular fibers of a nut of nodal curves. <clears throat> and so there are two remarks. So first of all, um, so this rational curve, uh, this rational surface here is extremal. Um, and this is unique. There's exactly one rational surface with an I9 fiber. And so on the other hand, so this is an observed um, and um, Aru Katsaka of all of that, this, the superpotential of P2, it can be, so first one can fill in the three sections or do the fiber-wise compatification. One will get an X check. And then this X check, uh, as we said, this is, can be compatified to, to this rational surface. And so in other words, the things we have here or either this one or this one, this is exactly the mirror. So in other words, that uh, the, mirrors, um, the mirror of P2 you can be constructed by, you start with a special Lagrangian vibrations, and then we do a su suitable uh, hypercare rotation, and then it recovers the mirror of, of, of P2. And so topologically, this is the right thing. So in, in the work of Oru Katsaka of Olaf, so they proved the homological mirror symmetry for P2 and for the, uh, the Fukai Saito category of the superpotential that's isomorphic to the, um, the right category of Korean sheaf in general for, for this um, Depetsu surfaces. But um, so for, due to the nature of simplex geometry. So the Foucault category doesn't really depend on the complex structure. But here, what I mean is exactly one will see exactly the, um, the complex structure uh, of the superpotential. Right. So, so, so that's the first step. And actually uh, one can 
what, what we, we, we do slightly more. So, so um, on the mirror side, so, so this X check in the previous slide, so which is the hyper K rotation from X, this one also exists, there exists Ricci flat metric constructed by Hein. And actually there are more. And so respect to the Ricci flat metric that constructed by Hein, uh, we const also constructed the spatial Lagrangian vibrations. And while this, this um, we said that these two are mirror to each other, so it's natural to expect that the, the XYZ vibration we get are really dual to each other. And so in the, indeed, this is the case. So, so here, um, this X is not just X. So it also has a complement, which is into the curve. So parametrizing the either the curve you choose. And so on the other side, so that corresponding to the killer parameters here. So on here that um, you choose the corresponding killer class. And so there exists a mirror map, Q to Q check of Q, uh, Q to Q check. And so once respect to the mirror, um, everything is written respect to the mirror map. And so the XYZ vibrations on X check will be mirrored, uh, will be dual torus vibration of the other one. So, so that will uh, sort of for the recover the original Strominger Yao Zaslow conjecture that says that that uh, the the mirror uh, the Kalavi Yao manifolds and has a special Lagrangian vibrations, and then we on the mirror it can it also has a special Lagrangian vibration which is the dual torus vibration of the original one. So let me uh, have the scattered proof of the theorem. So the first step is to construct model spatial Lagrangian tori. So near the, the boundary divisor E, um, this is modeled by the, the normal bundle of, of E, which is a line bundle. And so I would take X, I would call XC to be the complement of the normal bundle. Um, and you th I throw away the zero section. And on the space XC, um, there's a natural um, two zero phone, holomorphic volume phone on that. Um, and one can write on the so-called Calabi N sets, which is uh, a Ricci flat metric and that satisfy a similar equation that we we wrote down earlier. And so if we choose a cycle, we choose a special Lagrangian, we choose a, a special Lagrangian, I'll call the alpha inside E. And then um, so on on this no on this normal bundle. Um, one there is a one can construct a, a, a metric such that its uh, curvature form is exactly a Ricci flat metric on E because E is a club Yao of one dimension. So and one can take the unit normal un, unit S one bundle respect to the metric, and then one that will introduce an S one vibration over alpha. And one, one can compute the chain, uh, chain class of this normal bundle. And if it's alpha is Lagrangian, then the, this chain class vanishes. And so you get a trivial S1 vibration. And so you get the topological, in this case, you get a two torus. 
And by straightforward calculation, the spatial, if alpha is a spatial Lagrangian, then alpha tilde will become also a spatial Lagrangian. And so that gives us an, uh, like a local model that uh, we're looking at. So in the second step, so, so in this neighborhood of the curve, so there is a neighborhood such that it's very, the data respect to the TL metric and the two zero one I just talked about is really close to um, the, the model geometry. Uh, that's the normal bundle of the curve and was the copy and sense. And so this is a, uh, this is proof in the work of uh, Hai, uh, Song, Vilakovsky, and Zong. And so then um, there exists a, um, a, a diffeomorphism. morphism. So, so, on the, so if you throw away a complement, X, you throw away a compact set. So here XC, you throw away another compact set. And then there is a different morphism. And such that uh, the pullback data is, is asymptotic to the original data. And so then using Moser's trick, um, the Lagrangian, um, we get, we, we can pull back the Lagrangian back to X and then you use Moser trick. You get a Lagrangian in the prescribed class and it's almost special. And so the, the third step um, is we're going to use the Lagrangian mean curve flow. So recall that the gradient Lagrangian, oops, sorry. So the gradient Lagrangian is, um, is saying that the restriction of the hol holomorphic two uh, N0 form restricted on L, um, it has, it is like exponential I theta times volume form. And the theta can be left originally, it's this um, L to S1, but it can be lifted to, to R. And so we say it's graded. And then at special Lagrangian, if this, the theta here is a constant. And so the idea is using the so-called the Lagrangian mean curve flow. So it's a family of, um, uh, uh, maps from L to X, so I should satisfy this equation. So it's, uh, you deform the, the Lagrangian in, in the direction of the main curve. And in the Calabial case, oops, in the Calabial case, this is just J times the this um, the almost complex structure acting on the gradient of the, the phase theta. So if one can show that the flow converges, if the flow converges, that means that uh, um, this part equal to zero. And so in particular, that means that theta is a constant. And so then the limit will be a special Lagrangian. And so this is a like a, a dream that uh, one, one can produce some special Lagrangian in this way. Um, however, that in general, one expect that this is not going to work because that um, say, for example, when we see that um, in the, the expectation is like um, uh, when we run the flow, um, the, that will, the flow will develop singularities and you have to do surgery and then then run the flow. For example, that can be seen in the work of and Joyce or uh, Chris Woodward. And so, so just uh, so it's a fact that uh, Smolzak proved that this mass of index zero condition and Lagrangian condition can be preserved under Lagrangian main curve flow in the Killer Einstein manifolds. In particular, if we're in Calabial case, that the uh, um, Lagrangian condition and Maslow index zero condition will be preserved. And so that will be the idea. And so the whole difficulty is that the geometry is degenerate. Um, so 
the TL metric is not bounded. So the injectivity radius at infinity will shrink to zero. And so when you want to run all the, the standard argument in, in Lagrangian mean curvature flow, the, um, there are a few key uh, geom geometric quantities will degenerate. For example, the first eigenvalue and the volume for novel. And also that the geometry has no sign on C1 and that caused trouble. And so the whole, whole thing is to um, develop a, a qualitative analysis of the Lagrangian mean curve flow. And so that will help us to get uh, um, the, we'll be able to prove the convergence of the Lagrangian mean curve flow. And moreover, the Lagrangian mean curve flow will flow the end sets vibration to special Lagrangians near the, the curve at infinity. So this is not obvious. Um, so for example, one can look at the, the so-called dumbbell in this picture. And so, so one can see that if one have, a, we start from the Lagrangian, a, 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 a semantic flow here, it will flow in this direction while, uh, so if you are on the other side of this green curve, it will flow to the other the point on the left, very left. And so that will tell you that uh, you won't be able to flow as a smooth vibration to smooth vibration. In general, this is not true. However, in this case that we have, um, because Lagrangian mean curve flow preserve the Hamiltonian isotopy class. So if there are two Lagrangians that converge to um, the, there are two n sets Lagrangian that converge to um, call it L1 tilde and L2 tilde. And then one can look at the, their, their, their flow homology. And because the Hamiltonian isotopic classes are preserved, if originally they are not the same thing, that means that they will be disjoint because there are two different fibers. And so they, they're disjoint. And if L1 and L2, they're, the limit co coincide. There will just be um, their flow homology of itself will just be the flow homology of L1 itself, this is just torus, which is not zero. And this is, we use, uh, this is because it's in dimension four and um, the J holomorphic curves and are obstructed. Or um, the virtual dimension of the, all, all, the, all, all the disk you can have is virtual dimension minus one. And so that tells you that um, um, the special Lagrangian vibration actually via the main curve flow will flow to a vibration. So that will be the, um, the third step. And the fourth step is one to deform a, a, a special Lagrangian to arrive to a vibration. And so here that the idea is that one can do a so-called hypercare rotation from X to X check. And now the special Lagrangian here is now becoming a little curve. And so the, the idea is that we're going to prove that um, the deformation of this little curve is open and closed. And the key point is that um, um, it's probably more natural in differential geometry to, to state the deformation of some manifolds where uh, it's just hard to do that here. Um, but if you viewed it as deformation of maps and then and in, in dimension four, that the, the techniques of J holomorphic curve can come into play. And so the whole point is to prove that using flow theory to, or, or J holomorphic curve theory to prove that the deformation is open and closed. And so for the smooth ones, that it's already known that um, by, by McLean and Basson, that the deformation of smooth holomorphic Lagrangians are unobstructed. And so for closeness, one can, um, for the degenerate geometry, one can still have this, the Gromov compactness theorem that's 
um, to prove it's closed. And once you have the companion theorem, one can analyze the possible bubbling phenomenon that can happen in this particular geometry and analyze all the possible configuration that can happen. And once you know that what the configuration you can happen, you can uh, case by case study the possible deformation and that prove the openness. And so once we have this, yes, any questions? Yeah, I mean, can, can I don't know if you plan to say more about this point, but um, I don't quite understand. If we're using hypercalar geometry anyway to use the existence of, to, you know, to kind of translate the special Lagrangians to, uh, to, to, to an elliptic curve, why did we need the initial story about, about starting with, you know, a small Lagrangian torus and running mean curvature flow? I mean, because I don't know there existed a single one in the beginning. So say if we start with K3, then it's obvious because in K3- No, yeah, but I don't care about K3, I don't care about this, yeah. So in, yeah. This in this example, you're saying you cannot construct this elliptic vibration um, on a hypercalar rotation of the original space? Uh, you say that uh, on, on this space or, or here? Yes, so I, you know, I start, I'm, I'm just puzzled like, I, I, your, your X is like the complement of the, we're talking about the complement of the elliptic curve in CP2, right? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, um, my question is, if I start with the complement of the elliptic curve in CP2, and, yes. um, and can't, I, can't I just hypercalar rotate it, think of yes. it as an object in algebraic geometry, produce, a special, uh, produce an elliptic vibration there, and then yes. hypercalar rotate it back and say that I have my, my special Lagrangian vibration. Yeah, and that's the hard part. Okay. That's that's whole. The, the key point is that we don't know what the hypercalar rotation is. This a prior. Okay. okay. Thank that, you. That's really that, that's really hard part. And actually, uh, there there are some conjectures in differential geometry before. And actually, we sort of we have a second paper and disprove that. Okay. Great. So the, the hard part is we, we don't know what the hypercalar rotation that is. A prior right. And what do you mean by we don't know what it is? You mean writing down the metric on it? No, even so. The first question is what when we do hypercalar rotation, we need to have a metric to start with. And so, say for example, we use the TL metric. We don't know we exactly know what this. After we do hypercalar rotation, we even don't know what the complex structure is. Okay. That's usually the hard part of doing hypercalar rotation. If you want to do any calculation. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for the question. Yeah. And so, so once we have this, we'll have the, 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 the vibration itself, especially, and then you do have a rotation back, we get a special Lagrangian vibration. And so the last step is to compatify uh, um, this vibration to a compact complex surfaces by adding, so we want to argue that the one can really add the fiber and infinite to compatify it, it's still some work. And then once you can compatify the rest of the, you can using algebraic geometry to uh, class, using this classification and to argue that it's rational surface. And by use, uh, so one have this local monodrome vibration and infinity, that will tell you that the fiber and infinity, you need to put an I9 and that will tell you that we'll, we'll get a unique rational surface. Right, so that's the, the, the rough idea of how we achieve this. And so the next thing is that, uh, so, so let's go back to the uh, flow theory. So given the Lagrangian sum manifold, um, Foucault, oh, 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 no, no, and probably there's also in, there's different contexts. Is people one will have uh, anything structures on the um, then the cohomology of of this Lagrangian, and so once we have this, um, there is uh, we can talk about the um, the Mora Cardan equation um, for um, elements in H one. Uh, and this, and then you mod out the so-called the gauge equivalence. And in this case, that the 
uh, in this particular case that the gauge equivalence will be trivial and uh, um, everything will be more cartoon due to dimension reason. And so now we have a Lagrang a Lagrangian vibration. And so given two points on the base that we choose a path and um, so that will have one will have a one parameter family of Lagrangians, and so the corresponding um, amphibian structure will be pseudoisotropy. And so here I'm, I'll, I'll use the Foucault's trick, and then I will. So I, I, I need to uh, correct the, the contribution from flux, and that will induce the pseudoisotropy will introduce an isomorphism between the more cardinal spaces. And the key point is that uh, uh, this isomorphism is not exactly identity um, because there's uh, definitely H1 of the fibers are all natural isomorphic via the uh, Grassmannian connections, but um, there is some information coming from the muscle in the zero disk. And the key point is that this is a homotopy invariance. And so given um, H1, um, two bases, uh, a, a Z basis of the fiber. So uh, this isomorphism, or well, one can write an American ele elements as B in terms of this basis, um, I will have two coordinates, X1 and X2, and it sends to something. And then again, I will write it in terms of bases. And so here, the spaces are what I mean is like originally this, there's E1, E2 here, and I will do a parallel transport. E1, E2 here. And so I get two coefficients. And so for a mirror symmetry reason, um, we want to take the dual torus vibration, we also want to portion out the, the dual lattice. And so we take the exponential and that will define, um, so you just send this ZI to the exponential of the corresponding coefficients here. And that will give us an automorphism. And so um, recall that there is a boundary map from the relative cohomology -homolog uh, to H the boundary classes. And so I will call Z partial gamma to be Z um, partial gamma E1 and Z2 partial gamma E2. Um, and so recall that this partial gamma will force inside the H lower one, while EI falls, they are in the H upper one. And so they're, um, so the, the pairing is well defined. And in particular, this expression Z gamma here is independent of the choice of basis. And so um, in this dimension that um, if you have, say for example, if you have a special Lagrangian vibrations and then the low side um, uh, fibers bounding mass of index zero disk will be one dimension. And so there are each, if you're in the right directions, then this F phi, how did acting on this um, will, will be in a par very particular form. I will send Z to the partial gamma R prime to, to itself, but was additional factor. And this factor as a function uh, I will be, so the log of it will be in a very particular form, I will be a generating function of this. And then I will call this, I would use, I will call this coefficient, I will write the, the things in a particular y. And then I will call call this coefficients, the open Gramovitan variance of the, of the class, the relative class D gamma and which boundary of U. All right. So, um, so, so this give a why of uh, defining the open Gromo with invariance in this in, in, in this case. And so so the, the observation is that the SYZ fibers, the bounding muscle of index zero disk, um, sitting above affine lines with respect to the complex affine structure. And so 
Um, the advantage of that is that um, we know that the, the low side of the, uh, the torus fiber they bound in holomorphic disk are straight lines. And so they give you strong constraints and they tell you where you can have holomorphic disks. Um, and so one for uh, a given, oops, sorry. So if we have um, some fibers, let's go LU. And so if there were, there are some classes with non-trivial open Gromovitan variants. And so one can find uh, an affine line that's passing through these points. And so such that the symplectic areas keep decreasing. And so if this area is decreasing to zero and the invariant does not jump at all, uh, one can prove that it will, this will end to a singularity because that um, if you have very small symplectic area, it does not go far away from the single, uh, the, the, the boundary uh, condition. And then the, but um, if there's no singular fibers near that, and then there will be, you know, topologically there, there cannot be a holomorphic, cannot be a disk class. And so if it jumps at some points like the, here, and one can use, because the particular form of this at fine, one can uh, use the concept of Solomon lemma to tell you that, that uh, there are some classes um, that grew together, some classes of holomorphic disk grew together to the original classes. And so, you, so each of the classes will, that means that uh, this will, this holomorphic disk of class gamma degenerate into gamma one and gamma two, or even you might have more. And so you can run the, the same flow to each of them. And, but the simplet area will keep decreasing and using Gromov compactness theorem, you will be able to prove that. Uh, so at the end, each of them will step at the singularity. And so you get um, a diagram like this, and each one is a straight line. Uh, each one is like a straight line with respect to complex structure, uh, complex affine structure. And so this is a, a tropical curve or a tropical disk. And you can associate a weight to it. And so the, the tropical holomorphic correspondence it says that the, the weight account of the tropical disk will be exactly the same thing as the um, as the open Gromov Witten variance I just defined. And so so once so so here right now I just tell you that every holomorphic disk uh, or every class with non-trivial invariant there is a corresponding tropical disk. And so once you have this weak correspondence, you can try by induction on the number of ages you have and trying to prove that uh, the class this is true for all possible classes. So that will, uh, that will establish the second step. And so the last step is to, 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 to compare the affine structure on the base. So, so recall that um, we have uh, a spatial Lagrangian vibration. This, we have a space of spatial Lagrangian vibration and Hitchin tells us that there exists a complex affine structure. On the other side, uh, this, this uh, gross zebra program, or in this case, uh, did by Carl Pompola zebra, they consider the, um, the mirror construction for uh, the using Tori degeneration to construct a, a, a fine manifold with singularities. I will, I will use, I, I call it BCPS. And so, so one can ask, are these two affine structure the same thing or not? And so, so this is a, a joint work with uh, Xu Chen Lao and Song Zhu Li. Um, and also, uh, but then um, Peru pursued that he, they, he informed us that um, he actually have a, the same result slightly earlier where using a complete different method. And so this, this affine structure that that's been used in the work of CPS is that you, you, you have this point is say one half, one half, and this point is uh, zero minus one, 
and this point is minus one zero. And you throw away this, the three points are the the, the place where you have the singular fibers. We call it the base of P, uh, the base of uh, this SYZ vibration has three singular fibers. And then you make the cut. So you just look at the PR2 and then you throw away this part. And so you only have like three uh, strip region and then you grew you grew this uh, you grew this 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 age with the this age um, and and you're keeping this this direction and so 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 there exists a unique metric that doing the trick and so you grew the the two sides of the cuts in a particular y and that will result in a, 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 an a integral affine structure and so what we proved is that um, this exactly the one um, for the this is exactly the base of SYZ vibration with respect to complex of fine metric, uh, complex of fine manifold. So in particular, you can look at the um, for example that um, here maybe I should use the right one. So there's a tropical disk like this. And so in this direction, this is uh, minus one, one. And in this direction, this is, uh, th this is one, two. And so the, when you have the balancing condition, the things that are going up is three, zero, uh, is zero, three. And so that tells you that uh, this red one, the red tropical here, curve here, that will, um, that will be topologically, this is like some, some rational curve that's touching the, the, the elliptic curve at infinity with a tangent to three. And so this curve has multiplicity three because if you look at this two uh, vector, you look at the, their determinant is a three. And so that gives you uh, a multiplicity three while well, that there is exist a while well, there exists um, another th three tropic curve like this and so each of them has multiple three and so in total we see that uh, there is an eight there is an, uh, three times three so it's nine a1 curves um, which ten with tangency tangency three at infinity and so indeed, this is the case. It's easy to see that in algebraic geometry because that if you want to have a, a curve, uh, you want to have a line that's a uh, tangent to an, a point in, at a the curve at uh, multiplicity three in the main is as must be a three fortune points. So uh, for an, an elliptic curve, there are nine three torsion points. And so you see this number. And so in this, uh, one can um, calculate the, the first few uh, degrees and that always matches the numbers that you, you get from algebraic geometry. And also I want to mention that uh, if you particularly look at the fiber that at, an, at zero, and so if I have time, so, so actually one can show that the, this fibers has the, um, this fibers will have exactly the superlential, this the standard standard one, and so so I think it's natural to con con conjecture that this this fiber is Hamiltonian isotopy to the Clifford torus, although I don't know in no detail how how to prove that. And so with this comparison of the fine structure, then one can say for P two. Um, the open gromo witten invariance um, we identify with the tropical counting on the base. And because, so for every such tropical disk, you can, if I have a tropical disk like this, I can enlong the, um, this point at infinity to infinity, and then I got a, a tropical curve. And because the base, 
uh, the SYZ vibration with respect to the complex of phi structure, exactly the same as the base of the, um, the phi structure that's been used in CPS. Well, on the other side, uh, there's a student, um, a former student of Zebert, uh, Tim Gabla. He, he proved that the, the logarithmal Witten invariance of maximal tangency will be exactly um, equal to the, the weight account of tr tropical A1 curves. And so via this, we can say that then we prove that the, the open gromal with endurance exactly as the log gromal with endurance of maximal tangency in the case of P2. Um, and then we, we can avoid that directly comparison of this virtual fine number of cycles um, from a simplex geometry to algebraic geometry directly. Um, to ask if there's any questions so far. Sorry, I was, go I was, I guess you weren't quite done yet. Uh, let, let me wait till the end and then ask my question. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so, 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 so maybe I still have a few minutes. So, 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 so I can also ask if we can uh, put, put this, uh, the boundary divisor infinity uh, and then compute the super potential. And so the, the question that this is probably not a well defined question because the metric I'm using or some type of form I'm using uh, for the Lagrangian vibration is that uh, is complete. And so it doesn't extend to E. And so, it's, so, it's, so, the, so the substitute is to through the following lemma. So there exists an exhausting open sets on the base and, and a sequence of Kähler form on P2. And so, so the, the sequence of Kähler form is constructed such a way that a restraint on the pre-image of ex larger and larger open sets, they are exactly Tian Yao. While that this omega i are, are global simplified form on, on P2. And so you can view, so in other words, that the TNL metric, they're the limit of this a sequence of some type, uh, a kilo, actually it can be kiloform on, on P2. And so this WI um, will be actually the, as a homology class, it will be a multiple of the, the first chain class. And then one can say that this, this the SYZ fibers or Lagrangian respect to omega i for i larger than one. Once we fix a fiber, and then for large i, then then L u will be Lagrangian respect to omega i. And so, so you can so with this, um, if one compute the superlential, this dynamic you sort of can be interpreted as like a renormalization procedure of Hori Vafa that's explained by a rule that you have to um, if you take on look at the SYZ mirror is usually too small, but you have to enlarge the, your Kähler class or a simplectic form, and you, you have to imply the simplectic form so that you see the whole mirror. And this is exactly the process. But in, in when you have a, a, a smooth uh, either curve as boundary divisor. And so, so then one can talk about the super potential for each Lagrangian now. Um, by counting the muscle of index two disk that's passing through the generic points on, on the fiber. And so, so with the, the particular choice of the, the sympathetic form, so, so the good thing about this is that uh, one can actually interpolate the, the, this, the local model that we talked about this uh, BN set, so with the, the, the TNL space. And so, so it's very easy to compute the invariance uh, on, on the on, on the Calabi N sets. There, you can write on the, the homomorphic disk explicitly. Well, on the other side, so so using this uh, the symplectic form and it's a syntactic compared with the TL metric. So when you have any kind of bubbling between this one prime of the family, um, the the symplectic area of the bubbling. Just this, just the, the part that coming from the muscle of index to this will always be or dominating uh, the the simplectic area of uh, of the, the of this particular case beta naught that we're interested in, and so that tells you that the 
in, in this one from the family and totalizing the, the Tianyao space and the cloud VN sets, um, the, no bubbling can happen. And so the accounting by Kobolism argument will be one. And so one can have a similar uh, tropical holomorphic correspondence or tropicalize the super potential. Um, and probably, um, so, so the hard part this year is probably the, to argue that actually the, uh, there, there's a well-defined sub, tropical super potential. Um, there, there's a finite many such um, tropical curve. And then one can derive the, also by inductions, uh, one, can, one can establish the tropical homomorphic correspondence. And I think my time is up. Maybe I should stop here. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank you, Shen, for the very nice talk. Questions? Maybe I'll ask the question I meant to ask. So it had to do with your um, conjecture, let's say that you get the Clifford torus and I wanted to understand what do you mean by that precisely because of this question of which symplectic form are we getting? Yes, uh, that's a wonderful question. So. Uh, one can, so I won't be able, so probably the bad thing about this is actually one can construct this omega i. And so this omega i can be, can be constructed such that actually this is monotone. Okay, that was exactly my question. Yeah, and but, so- and, and it has the right discount. Yes, and right discount. And so it's very natural to expect that that is the Clifford torus. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe I'll remark that because of the tropical homomorphic correspondence, and so actually, uh, so so actually, you will see that the 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 superlential of all the fibers, uh, S Y Z fiber, are exactly have the same superlential as those like constructed in in in, in Vienna as example. But they're not in. I believe that most of them are not monotone, but they will have the right discount as the one that appears in Vienna's work. Well, the expectation should be that you need to deform the vibration on the base so that those now become the things that are in the monotone chambers. Yeah. So in, in this particular vibration, only, I, I believe this only just the one that's sitting in the middle is monotone. I agree. Uh, I think um, Catherine has a question. Do you want to just say it or you can look at the chat? Uh, her, her mic isn't working, so I'll, I'll just read it. So uh, can you say more about how you pick almost complex structures? Uh, you mentioned earlier that this is the hardest part of hypercalar rotation. Yeah, so uh, go to the previous pages. Um, so. So the complex structure, the, so 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 to make this a lot of things work, I, I will, the, the complex structure I'm using on P2 will be the standard complex structure. I'm probably not the right page here. Yeah, so 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 I will really need to use so so here I will really use the the standard complex structure. And then together with the Tenyon metric. Other questions? As I, I was just, I was just curious. Like, what's um, is there sort of like a next natural example or sequence of examples that you'd want to apply this machinery to? Like, uh, you... so, so I, I think that, uh, yeah. So that's a good question. So, so I'm actually hiding something here. Uh, so. So, so in general, this uh, so 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 the theorems here we have here is not just for P two as or in general for the Pazzo surface. Okay. Um. So. 
So once we're having the battle surface, um, so, so the next example will just be P1 times P1. Okay. Uh, so, so, so one will have to, so, 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 and again, also in, so, 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 so still was um, the same work. We have this vibration. So in my previous preprint, so this is done. So the, the only part is the comparison of the tropical geometry, or in other words, how, how we, are we compute, compare with the, the base of XYZ vibration with the uh, fine structure that coming from this, uh, this power pump, pump, pump zebra. Uh, actually, they're, uh, unfortunately, actually, in, in the case of P1 times P1, uh, they are not the same thing. Uh, but they, the, the fine structure, they're related, but not even from uh, like moving worms. And so, but uh, I think that, uh, but they're still like, they're similar. And so one can still keep track of the, the tropical counting. I believe that uh, one can still get like P1 times P1s, um, this, uh, this two counting will still be the same. Um, I see, but this this result you cited this result from from twenty twenty that sort of about them tropical correspondence kind of on the B set or like on the on the base of the the mirror is it is there like a counterpart was that specific to CP two minus elliptic curve or is that sort of a more general? Oh, so so this is for uh, if there's any depacho surface relative to the smooth anti angle divisor, and then X on this base. There is exists a spatial Lagrangian vibration here, but then this uh, so this is S Y Z vibration, and then the tropical counting is always on here, the base of S Y Z vibration. So there's always this tropical holomorphic correspondence, but then the base I'm using will be the base of S Y Z vibration. But then this is not clear if this is the same thing as the one that's being used in Gross Zebra program. Right. And so in the, even in the case of actually, in the case of P1 times P1, this is already false. Uh, but you're saying you can kind of, there's some way to kind of correct it or? Yeah, so, so one, the, the, um, the, the, the fine structure will still be related. And so I, I think one can still be able to capture like, to prove the correspondence um, by, yeah, to, to achieve the, the, the counting or the same. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? So uh, let's thank Yushin again. Thank you.